Let's get started using the Makerverse Supercapacitor Real-Time Clock with a Raspberry Pi Pico. We'll connect these two together, set the time and get some example code working and we'll even make a basic data logger project. Let's get started. To follow along, you'll need a Makerverse Real-Time Clock with Supercapacitor Backup. This supercapacitor means that the clock can keep accurate time between power cycles for up to seven days without the need for managing any batteries. And I've already soldered headers to mine. You'll also need a Raspberry Pi Pico with pin headers soldered on, a breadboard, some jumper wires, and a potentiometer if you want to follow along with that data logging example. Plug your Pico and your clock into a breadboard, connect the ground pin or the GND pin on the clock with the third pin in the top right of the Pico, Connect VCC to the 3.3 volt pin. That's the fifth pin in the top right on the Pico. That's power handled. Now for the clock and data. Connect SDA, the data pin, to the top left pin on the Pico. That's GP0. And connect SCL or clock to the pin just below that, the second pin in the top left. And finally, connect to your computer with USB. In the article for this tutorial, find the download section and find the driver that we need to download. That's the Makerverse rv3028.py link. Right click that link and save link as. And I'm just going to save it into my downloads. We're going to be using Thonny to program our Pico. If you haven't used Thonny with Pico before, check out our guide for that. I'll open Thonny, connect to my Pico and right click that file and upload it to the Pico. Back in the article for this tutorial, find the basic example and copy all of that code into Thonny. I'll paste it into this untitled file and save that to the Pico as main.py. Reboot your Pico with control D and we get in the REPL a, what looks like a factory default kind of time. You know, it's the year 2000, it's the 1st of January and we have some, some time that's pretty close to the whole hour. Let's take a look at what's going on. We start off by importing the i squared c and pin functions from machine. And we also import the Makerverse IV3028 module for running the clock. Next, we make an i squared c object. And this defines the pins that we connected to before. This is the i squared c bus that handles communications between our Pico and the real time clock. So we're using bus zero and we have SDA or data on pin zero, GP zero. And we have SCL or clock on pin one, which are those two pins we selected earlier. That returns an I squared C object that we call I2C, and we then pass that object into the initializer for our real time clock and call that object RTC. So we now have an RTC object. We call RTC.timestamp, which gets us that timestamp string, and then we print it to the REPL, and that is how we got this string in the end. Let's proceed to setting the correct time. Return to the article for this tutorial and find the time format section. There's two ways that we can prescribe time using this library. We can create lists. So here we have a date list and we just fill it with integers for day, month, year. And similarly, we can create a time list and fill that with integers for hours, minutes, seconds. There's an optional AM or PM indicator that we can include at the end. By default, it just assumes we're using 24 hour time if we exclude that indicator. The second way we can prescribe dates and times is by using a dictionary instead of a list. So here we create an empty date dictionary and then we add to it keys for day and that would be the integer for the day, month, year, and then we have the time dictionary for hours, minutes, and seconds. Two very similar ways to set the date. I prefer this one because it's quite prescriptive. You know exactly what you're getting because it says day in the dictionary. Scroll down to the next example, copy all of that code, and we'll paste that into Thonny. I'll just paste it over the top of everything we already have. The start of the code looks very similar to our last example, so we'll skip over that. We'll move on to setting the time with the dictionary format. Now this has been pre-filled with some default values, but let's set it to the correct time. At the moment, for me, it is Tuesday the 15th of February, 2022, and it's 10.53 in the morning. So I can enter the 15th of February, that's two, 2022, and it is 10.53 in the AM. 
Now when I run this code, I'll just save my file and press Control D. Now I have the correct timestamp for the current time. Now that we've set the time, that time is backed up by the supercapacitor so that even when power is removed, this clock will keep ticking for up to about seven days. When power is restored, the supercapacitor will continue to charge back up so it's ready for another seven days of power outage. Now let's create a really simple data logging project. I'll connect a potentiometer to the Raspberry Pi Pico's ADC0. This will allow us to read some analog value from the potentiometer and save it to a file. We'll read the potentiometer and then save it to a file with a timestamp. And then we can just do that repeatedly so we can see how that value changes over time. I'll connect my potentiometer with the leftmost lead connected to VCC or three volts, the rightmost lead connected to ground and the middle lead connected to ADC zero on the Pico. Return to the article and find that data logging example. We'll copy that and paste it into main. I'll highlight everything, paste over it, save the file. Now when I run the file with control D, the REPL will print out a timestamp and a value. Here we can see on the left, we have the timestamp and then to the right of that, we have some value and that is the value from the ADC. As I vary the position of this potentiometer, we can make that value change. So I've wound it all the way to one end and it's a very small number. And then if I wind it all the way to the other end, we can go to the maximum scale, 65535. Stop the script with control C and in the file explorer in Thony, under Raspberry Pi Pico, we'll just refresh the listing. And now we have a new file, datalog.csv. We can right click and open that in Thony and we can see an exact copy of what we saw in the REPL. We have our date timestamp and then we have our ADC values. And scrolling down, you can see where I wound it to the minimum value and where I wound it to that maximum value. And looking closely at our timestamp, we can see that it's incrementing by one second each time. Now, of course, you could download this data log file onto your computer using Thony and then open it up in a spreadsheet program if you want to do some other analysis like create plots. Taking a look at the code, we have a very similar import sequence. This time we import time so we can create a delay. We have a log interval in seconds. So here we are taking one sample every second and we're also setting up to read on ADC zero. In an infinite loop, we create a variable X and assign that the value that we read from the ADC and we just print the timestamp with that value. Next, we open up our data logging file, datalog.csv in append mode. So we're going to add entries to the bottom and we write the timestamp to it followed by a comma. And then we convert our value from an integer to a string and we append that to the file as well. Finally, we put in a new line so that it formats nicely and we just flush and close the file. That guarantees that our data is saved to the file and we can remove power at any time without corrupting the file. And finally, at the bottom of the code, we just have a loop that creates that one second interval. It's just getting the time from the clock and making sure that at least a second has elapsed since the last sample. So there you have it. We've set up our Makerverse SuperCap real-time clock to keep accurate time, and we've done a simple data logging project with it. This is now capable of keeping time between power cycles so you can unplug it, plug it back in, and rerun the code, and you ought to still get the same accurate time showing in your data log. If you have any questions about this content, let us know on our forums. We're full-time makers and happy to help. Until next time, see you later.